morning. It is two days after we uh, left you with that cliffhanger of kill repair uh, for our new Tiki Technical Tuesday. We will jump right back into the adventure. Uh, it is early in the morning. Uh, the Puka Pounders have been cast and they are dwelling behind me. And in the meantime, I thought we'd jump right back into this nightmare, which was, if you recall, I was snapping these bolts off. Um, while trying to replace the elements of the kiln. Now, I uh, do not think it's the kiln's fault at all. I think it's my fault for waiting so long to replace these. Um, a lot of thermal expansion is happening. Several people contact me that uh, have a lot more experience with this than I do. And uh, since I let these elements sit for so long and they were so corroded and getting and running so hot, uh, these bolts were expanding and contracting and ending up binding up the, the nuts on them. Anyway, it's the moment of truth. Here is the McMaster car order. I have not tested these yet. Um, this could be a disaster. Uh, the cliffhanger could start off sad immediately. Um, if it does, I will be making a phone call. And if it's successful, then uh, we will just hop right on to finishing wiring the elements. All right, here are the new bolts. They look close. The critical thing is it's gotta fit inside of here. Yeah! All right. God. I was trying to be cool about it, but I am pretty relieved. All right, I'm gonna go head into the kiln room and finish wiring up those elements. With the elements in, it's time for me to connect the control board. I do that by connecting these black wires to the elements. This allows the voltage to go into the kiln and make it hot. Once the elements are all connected, I'm gonna move on to the yellow wires, and those yellow wires all connect to the thermocouples so that the computer knows how warm it is inside of the kiln. Ta-da! Can you believe it? It's working! We've got all three thermocouples showing that they are connected, showing a good temperature, and according to the computer, everything is fine. But how do we really know it's fine? If only there was a magical device that would tell us the temperature of the kiln without relying on a computer or science. Well, no, I take that back. It's using science, but it's not using electricity. Um, and that is the magic of cones. So we've got the kiln wired up, brand new thermocouples, brand new elements. Technically, it should accurately fire to the temperature that we need to fire to. But how do we really know that? How do we know that the thermometer is reading correctly? Uh, the magic thing that will do that for us is the cone. So these are pyrometric cones. And as you can see, they are actually little cones. These are self-standing cones. They're even fancier than a normal cone. Um, and these have been made for over 100 years. They are a ceramic product, and they are designed to melt at a precise temperature. Uh, and there's a different cone for each temperature that you need, um, and that's what we're gonna use to test the kiln. So how does this little ceramic cone tell me the temperature? So it is a pyrometric cone. That means it is a not really a thermometer, it doesn't tell me the temperature, it shows me the temperature. So it will melt in a very special way. So once this thing gets up to temperature, it's gonna start doing this. It's gonna start melting and falling over. So this is from a kiln firing. Now it melts in a really special way in that it shows me exactly when it hits the perfect temperature. We have that one, we got this guy, and we have this guy. When a kiln cone just boop, bends over and just 
kisses the kiln floor like that, that means that you have hit the temperature perfectly. That is exactly what we want to see when we're looking at a good firing. This means that it was too cold in the kiln. It didn't quite reach the temperature. And this one, too hot. It's melted. I've actually opened up the kiln and found them even more melted than this. So it's a very accurate way to tell temperature. Now we're looking for a cone six firing. And um, to get even more accurate, I'm going to test three different cones in one firing. So this is what we're going to be putting into the kiln. It's called a kiln pack, and it's how we test the thermocouples to make sure that everything is firing correctly. Now I've got a range covered, cone six, that's the target, uh, 2165 degrees. Cone five, a little cooler, but not that much cooler. It's only 47 degrees cooler. And then we're going to even check for a hotter firing at cone seven, which would be 2194 degrees, only 29 degrees hotter than cone six, but that makes the world of difference when you're glazing. That, does this glaze look great here? Here it might be all bubbly. It might start to run. God only knows. Anyway, when we open up the kiln the next day, we want to see this. We want to see cone five, hot and melted. Cone six, just kissing the kiln floor. And cone seven, it's getting warm. It's starting to bend, but it's not all the way down. So let's put them in the kiln. Let's cross our fingers and... See if the wiring worked. So the kiln has three sections. And you remember that each section has its own thermocouple and it has two elements in it. So I want to test all three thermocouples. Uh, kilns can get hotter and cooler in different areas. So we're going to use a total of nine test cones. We're going to put three here. We're going to put three on this level and we're going to put three on this level. A uh, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven cone. Ho, ho, ho. All righty. Well, definitely hit cone five. Cone six, it's kissing. I call that kiss plus. Cone seven looks like we just nailed cone seven. Let's take a look at the next few layers. All right. Mid layer looks very similar to the top layer. Cone five, totally hit that. Cone six, Call that cone six plus for sure because cone seven is doing the perfect kiss. In fact, this one's even a little plus, so it's got a little warmer in the middle. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the barrel, and it looks like same thing as the other two layers. Cone five, definitely hit it. Cone six plus and cone seven, kissing the floor. All right. So we're a little, a little toasty. So here's where we are. Top shelf, middle shelf, bottom of the kiln. Pretty much we had a perfect cone seven firing. Uh, it was a little too hot for a true good cone six. The cone six cones are a little, meh, they're a little too smushed. Now remember what we talked about, that's only like a 29 degree difference between these two cones. Uh, the good thing about the Fancy Pants digital control is I can actually adjust, I can go in and adjust the pyrometers so that um, I can account for this, that, the, that it's firing a little hot right now. So I'm going to actually reload the kiln with nine more cones, adjust the uh, sensitivity and see if we can get it. Bam, we want this middle row to look like that. We want them all to be perfectly little, perfectly arched cones. But I think that you guys all get the idea of what it's like to replace a thermocouple and element in the kiln. So we're gonna call this uh, Tiki Technical Tuesday all done. I will see you next week.